What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for coming back to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. You guys know that I appreciate each and every time you guys tune in to this podcast. I try my best to make this podcast awesome, amazing, and awesome. Um, and hopefully I do that. Hopefully you guys do find value in this podcast. Um, today's episode, I am bringing on the CEO and co-founder of Paleo FX. Some of you guys might have heard of Paleo FX. It's a huge symposium once a year. All the big names in the paleo industry come out to this thing, and it is humongous. Uh, I mean, ginormous. <laughs> uh, so luckily, I was able to get connected with Michelle because this year is actually the first year I will be attending and speaking at Paleo FX. So I'm super, super excited about that. I've heard nothing but good things from my friends like Sean Stevenson, Abel James, Melissa Hartwig, um, all kinds of people about um, how awesome Paleo FX is. And so I'm really excited to finally be there in Austin, Texas. I think it is uh, May is when it is. <laughs> I will look up the dates for you guys and I have those in the show notes. But uh, Michelle Norris is the CEO and co-founder of Paleo FX, and in today's episode, we go into a little bit of her background of how she got into paleo in the first place, and her opinions on the paleo diet, for example, but also the background and how she got started in Paleo FX and what Paleo FX is and what it does for the community and how it's evolved over the years and what Paleo FX you know, might become in the near future and what it can do for you, right? So um, I think this episode is very informative and there's a lot of valuable gems from a nutritional standpoint, from a physical fitness, well-being, a mental and emotional standpoint, as well as an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, so if there's any entrepreneurs listening, I think you could also learn some valuable lessons by listening to this episode. Before we jump in, our show is sponsored by dropanfbomb.com. <laughs> I know it's so weird when I have to say that. Drop an F-bomb. So as you guys know, I like high-fat foods. Um, I love my fat. Drop an F-bomb makes eating fat so much more convenient, so much more tasty, um, because when I coach people on doing keto, for example, or eating high-fat foods, it's hard because people struggle with, you know, what am I supposed to eat? And it's hard. Like, what if I'm on the go with my kids or I travel off for work, what do I bring with me? It's hard to bring cheese and eggs and um, high-fat foods with you in your pocket and on the go. Drop an F-bomb.com is uh, a, a small company, but I really do believe in their in their mission and what they, what they do and, and who they are. Basically, these are uh, packaged, sealed, tight, um, high-quality fats. So anything from they have olive oil to coconut oil to macadamia nut oil, uh, avocado oil, all kinds of different kinds of oils, along with other, some other delicious, like seriously delicious nut butters. Um, you know, they have macadamia and nut butter um, and a few other ones that just are, taste delicious, you guys. Um, and what's cool about it is they're single serving packages. So you can put them in your pocket, bust it open, put it in your coffee. You know, you bring it with you when you travel. That's one of the things I do when I travel or if, I can't, if I'm not getting enough fats. It's hard to get in a lot of high quality fats when you're on the road at restaurants and things like that. It's easy to get in protein and carbs, but it's hard to get into the high quality fats. That's why I like Drop an F-Bomb. If you want to check them out, go to dropanfbomb.com. Use my discount code fit fat fit for 10% off your order. It tastes good. It's delicious. It's high. It's the highest quality fats out there. And like I said, it just makes it so much more convenient. So check them out at dropanfbomb.com. Use code fit fat fit for 10% off. Our next show sponsor is none other than questketo.com. I've been with these guys for a while now. Uh, well, Quest Nutrition, actually. Quest Keto is fairly new, um, but I'm a huge proponent of who they are. So basically, Quest makes um, healthy food taste good, <laughs> and they make it so much more convenient. And so that's what Quest Keto is about, especially for the keto industry. Uh, Prepackaged frozen meals. Yes, they are you know more convenient type meals, so they are frozen um, and things like that, but they taste really good. They make eating keto so much more convenient, um, especially when you're on the go. You don't have time to cook. Just the other day, I remember coming home with my girls and not having a lot of time to prepare any food. You know, all the meat was still frozen. All the vegetables hadn't been cut up. And, you know, I wanted to get them to bed at a decent hour. So I decided not to cook and just warm these up in the microwave, heat them up. And um, I think I had the bacon, egg, and cheese uh, sausage biscuit, right, which is like a replacement for an egg McMuffin. You warm it up in the microwave, you 
you and you eat it. It tastes good. My girls love it. The cinnamon roll is by far one of the best cinnamon rolls you will find. It's a keto cinnamon roll, you guys. So if you're missing these types of foods doing keto, check out questketo.com and their foods are amazing. One last quick announcement before we jump into today's episode, you guys. Uh, for those of you who are looking for something that is not really, say keto is not your thing, um, you know, I have a lot of different programs on my website that I've launched over the years, and I am actually just announcing now that I'm relaunching my Fat to Fit program, the same program I did over five years ago that helped me lose 75 pounds, but not only that, it helped thousands of people from all over the world lose tons of weight, you guys, and become healthier. It's a six-month transformation program with all the details of the meal plans, the grocery list, the workouts, um, the um, the demonstrations of the exercises in the workouts. It's the exact same program that I did, like I said, that helped transform thousands of lives from people all over the world. It's uh, at transform.fit2fat2fit.com. You can check out it's it's been relaunched, like I said, with a new company. I'm super excited to relaunch it. Um, this is my baby. This is what got me into, uh, you know, on all the TV shows was me losing the weight and getting other people to do it with me. All the transformation stories are remarkable, um, and this is, like I said, what put me on the map. So definitely check it out. Transform dot to fit dot com, and um, if you're looking to make a true transformation, not just a, a 30 day diet or 60 day diet. This right here will help you will help set you up for a true transformation change in your life. All right, let's jump into today's episode with Michelle Norris. All right, Michelle, welcome to the Fit to Fat to Fit Experience podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on, Drew. Hey, my pleasure. Um, it's it's an honor to be honest with you. Uh, so I first heard you on a podcast with Abel James, uh, who's a friend of mine back in the day, and you've done like Rob Lewis podcast as well. Um, and so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of you and also Paleo FX. Um, but for my audience, you know, that might not be familiar with what Paleo FX is or your background, maybe you could kind of start there with with you know what your background is and how how paleo fx came to be which i know is kind of a a long story but we have time (laughs) (laughs) yeah so yeah it is a long story um um so my background is kind of all over the map um i like to call myself a multi-potentialite because i have a whole lot of different interests and i've (laughs) done a lot of, uh, gone to school for a lot of different things, but, uh, I've been a trained chef. I was a project manager before, um, Paleo FX existed. I used to build Starbucks for a living and, uh, just kind of done a whole lot of different things. Um, I've been an event planner for over 20, 20 something years, probably now it's 30. <laughs> now that I say that it's been over 30 years now. And, uh, so, um, it's a, just interesting how everything kind of came to be with Paleo FX. Um, your, your fans probably also are, might not be familiar with the ancestral health symposium, but some of them might. And back in 2011, when the ancestral health symposium began, um, Keith and I went out there for that and he spoke at, um, the event. And when we were leaving, we were on the runway at LAX and we were like, um, one of the things with the ancestral health symposium is it's a decidedly academic symposium. So it's very science driven, very, um, you know, lots of abstracts and, you know, that type of thing and, um, studies and going through, um, or a little bit more, um, you know, just everyday people don't, aren't, aren't that interested in it. And so, um, we thought, you know, I was, on the plane with Keith and I said to him, you know, it's great. This was really wonderful. We geek out on the science, but at the end of the day, when we get home, all of our clients just want to know what do I eat? When do I eat it? When do I work out? What do I do to work out? You know, all of these things, um, and they, you know, they're glad the science is there, but they really have no interest in a lot of science. And so, um, we just realized that there was, um, you know, there was something missing that we needed the practical side of things. So paleo FX, obviously paleo F of X, which is the math function, paleo FX is decidedly 
academic, is decidedly not academic and is um, very practical, hands on where the rubber meets the road, that type of thing. So we are, um, you know, high impact, high action, um, just totally, it's, it's a blast and it's not, um, it's not academic. I mean, there is a lot of science that gets presented at Paleo Effects, but it's presented in a very different kind of, I always say that we're kind of rock and roll and <laughs> that's the kind of conference we are. So, um, it's a lot of fun. It's, um, it's a, it's a good time. Yeah. And I think that's why it, it appeals to so many people, right? It, it, because your average person is, isn't going to go to a science C conference and even really be able to comprehend what is being taught. People want to know, okay, basically, what are you trying to tell me? What do I eat? <laughs> right? Like so many people all the time, even for me, I have to break it down for a lot of my followers. Um, but that, that's because, you know, that people aren't interested in the science as much. They just want to know, okay, what does this mean for me? What do I do? And, and that's fine. And, and, and I think there's, uh, you know, we each have, um, our own different ways of, uh, looking at our own health and anyways. Um, but how, my question is, how did you get into paleo or did you grow up eating paleo? Um, I think I remember hearing you, you grew up, uh, you have celiacs and so kind of, I, I would be interested to know how you got into the paleo diet, if you will, and talk a little bit about that. That's a whole other long story. Yeah. <laughs> We're I, fine. We got plenty of time. To, I'm going to try to shorten it though. Cause, um, uh, so, uh, interestingly enough, you know, I did, I grew up very, um, my mom was a good cook, not an, like I, I'm a, I was a trained chef. So as a trained chef, I, my specialty was Italian. So I made my own pasta and I made my own pizza dough. And, um, my mom, you know, growing up, we ate pretty close to paleo. Um, you know, we did obviously eat bread and that type type of thing because, um, but uh, we did eat a very whole foods diet when I was growing up. Not a lot of my mom didn't have a lot of money for, you know, junk or junk food or anything like that. So I did kind of grow up that way. So it's interesting to kind of return back to your roots. But um, my um, what happened is, oh, gosh, now it's been 13, <laughs> maybe 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Um, uh I went paleo and then a year prior to that, Keith went paleo and, uh, my husband, Keith and I are partners in paleo FX and we're also partners in gyms and that type of thing now. But, um, back then, just when the internet was still in dial up, <laughs> he was, um, he was on the internet a lot with Rob Wolf and with Art Devaney and, um, talking to them and they were started telling him, they knew that Keith was very interested in nutrition and, you know, he's been a, he was a former bodybuilder, um, Mr. Virginia runner up to Mr. America. And that he always like dabbled with nutrition and was looking for things. And so, um, and they knew yeah, how much he worked out and that type of thing. Cause they really, they all talked quite a bit. And so they started telling him about paleo. So Keith decided to try it out. Um, and it just really worked for him. And what was interesting is Keith had a hereditary form of um, high blood pressure. And the doctors had gone so far as to tell him the last time we had gone into the doctor that if he didn't get it under control, that they wanted to put him on uh, a statin. And so um, he was like, um, he just kept trying to find something else because he just was not interested in doing that. Um, Keith's background before uh, Paleo FX and the gyms and Arcs Fit and all of that was um, he was an engineer in the um, pharmaceutical industry. And so um, <laughs> kind of a totally different turn to come this way. So he knew that medications that, that the pharmaceutical industry um, built the whole industry around maintaining diseases, not curing or preventing them. And so um, he didn't want to do that. So when he tried out the paleo diet about, maybe four weeks in, he, um, he got his blood taken at work every 58 days for, they did a blood drive every 58 days there. The, um, Red Cross came there. And so every time he would go get his blood drawn, of course they would do his blood pressure and then they'd give him a little lecture about his blood pressure and the whole nine yards. Well, after he had been paleo about, four, I think it was right at four weeks. Um, they came and did his blood pressure 
and then um, walked away. And he was like, well, what, what, hold on. He's like, what was my blood pressure? And they said, oh, 120 over 80. And he was like, what? He goes, are you sure? He goes, can you test wow. it again? And they said, sure. And so they took it again. Sure enough, 120 over 80. And he was like, all right. Um, hmm. So he thought that was real interesting. And then he started checking his own blood pressure. He had had a blood pressure cup at home. And because he would check it from, you know, from time to time for his high blood pressure. And he was checking his stu- his blood pressure every day. And he's never had high bl- blood pressure since. So that was that that kind of is, is how um, it started in the family. Well, what happened is he started reading a whole lot about celiac. And I literally had stomach pains and cramps and just felt awful every single time that I ate. And he kept saying, well, I think that you might have the celiac. You should probably get it checked up. Now, Keith is not a person that will beat you over the head with anything. So, so it, it took him a while to convince me to, to do this. And so, um, I, like I said, I made my own pizza dough and my own pasta and we were, every time I was making anything for dinner that Keith could not eat, that was not paleo, he would make his own dinner. And so, It had been, yeah. And so it had been about, I think it had been close to a year. He had been paleo and, um, I was making pizza and pasta. One of the kids celebrations, I think it was a birthday or something. And, um, he, there he was making his own dinner. And I looked at him and said, you're like never going to have my pizza or pasta again, are you? And he said, no. And he said, I really think you should get yourself checked out. I really think that you have celiac. So I did. I went to the doctor and I got tested and I was tested. Of course, back then they tested for the wrong antibodies. And, um, so I tested negative, but all of my symptoms and everything I had told the doctor, he was felt fairly certain that I had it. And so, um, he said, um, you know, uh, while he was talking to me, this was kind of hilarious. He was talking to me and telling me how they were going to do this biopsy and they were going to cut my colon and blah, 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 blah. And while he's talking to me, he's literally falling asleep. Like he keeps nodding off while, and it's while he's talking, not me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I don't think I want you cutting into my colon. And then I kind of thought about the whole thing and I thought, well, this is kind of, invasive for you to go cut my colon. I mean, like, why don't I just like remove that food from my diet and see how that goes. And, uh, so I did and about literally three weeks. Okay. So I was diagnosed with fibromyalgic, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, IBS. I had also been, um, diagnosed with early onset rheumatoid arthritis And so literally three weeks into paleo, everything was gone. Like all of it was gone. And then for the very first time in my entire life, I had migraine um, headaches since I was 17. I finally actually had control over my migraines um, for the most part. I had, um, you know, uh, hormonal um, changes during my cycle, but, um, it, where I had migraines during that time, but that was it after that. And then the only other time that I would have a migraine is if I had a trigger, one of my triggers, and I pretty much try to stay away from those. And so, um, it was just really odd, but the honest thing is, is that when I first went paleo and I got healthy, I was not happy about it. I was a food writer. <laughs> yeah. I was a food writer for um, another company and I wrote pasta and uh, pizza and all these types of Italian recipes. I did not, I very, very sad diet and, um, and I was in denial and I really believed that at some point I was going to be able to figure out how to put all of this back into my diet. And, um, and it wasn't until I had been on the paleo diet for about six weeks, what had happened is I, our son played baseball and it had been about maybe 12 weeks. We hadn't seen all of the parents and, um, I'd gone paleo in there. And then now, you know, women that are on the sad diet do all this yo-yoing. So we have every size from, you know, whatever I had every size from six to 12 in my closet and I kept them because I would go back and forth. It just happened. Um, so I, um, I hadn't really noticed that I had been dropping in size. And when we went to the game, 
all of the parents that had not seen me for like 12 weeks were like, oh my God, you look amazing. You've like lost so much weight. You look so vibrant. You look so healthy. What have you done? And then that was when the light bulb went off. That was when I was like, oh, okay, this stuff could actually help people. And, um, and then I quit writing for the other um, website and I started my own website and kind of took off from there. <laughs> that is so interesting because it's so cool, uh, especially because, you know, the pasta and those kinds of things were part of your brand in a way. And you're like, man, now I discovered this. Now I'm going to have to, you know, tell people, OK, maybe you shouldn't eat these or, or this and that. So I think that's pretty interesting. But at the same time, you can't really deny the results and like how you felt. I think what's what's interesting to me, too, is that, you know, your husband did it for a year first and you. I mean, I don't know how it was during that year. year. I mean, you said he cooked for himself. <laughs> and uh, it, I don't know if you looked at him like, man, you're weird. Or like, why don't you just eat these foods? <laughs> I totally did. But, you know, he had done weird stuff from time to time. He would try all different kinds of diets and, um, all, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And so I, I didn't look at him too weird. But um, I but this time was the first time it, he stuck with it. And st- I mean, it had been a year. So I knew at that point he was probably going to keep it. And, um, and it was just real interesting because, you know, yeah, if I wasn't making something he could eat, then yes, he would make his own dinner. I didn't make pasta and pizza every night of the week or anything like that by any means. And we ate fairly, I believe still fairly healthy for the, you know, we didn't have a lot of junk food in the house. We didn't have a lot of, we didn't eat eat at, um, like fast food restaurants or anything. Um, but very occasionally. And, um, so we ate fairly healthy for the most part, but, you know, having pizza and pasta in our diet and not watching, you know, soy and that kind of thing. And what turns out is I'm allergic to soy too. So, um, kind of an interesting thing. So going paleo really uh, helped me figure that out as well. So, yeah, that, it's really interesting because I can um, I can definitely relate because, for example, the SAD diet, you mentioned that. And, you know, I grew up in the 80s and, and a lot of us grew up with these foods thinking that these foods aren't that bad for you or they're not that unhealthy for you. You, you know, you're trying to get 7 to 11 servings of grains like we've been told. And that's kind of the way I was raised. Um, but what's interesting is, you know, I became a personal trainer. I got healthy. I got fit. And then when I did my fit to fat to fit journey, it was crazy how quickly when I started eating, you know, sad foods for six months straight, how quickly my health turned from this healthy fit guy, you know, eight and a half percent body fat to all of a sudden, you know, 32 and a half percent body fat and 269 pounds and uh, developed a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease within those six months. It's just crazy how quickly your body can change eating those foods. And we don't realize that because so, so many times we focus on our outward appearance of like, okay, if I eat this food, yeah, it's going to make me gain weight versus what is this going to do to my organs? What is this going to do to, um, you know, like, for example, you said you had fibromyalgia and, and all these lists of other things, IBS and stuff like that. We don't realize how food affects us on a cellular level. And so it can be scary. You know, I just had a, a, a speaking engagement this past weekend where I was telling people about how quickly my body changed. And it, it is scary from both the inside and outside perspective. Well, you know, what I find interesting is that we think I, I'm not real sure where it is in our thought process that it doesn't come into our thought processes. But if we're eating the diet that we use to fatten up cattle what do we think? Do we really think it's going to do something different for us? I mean, like that's, I I started thinking about that and thought, well, that's just kind of ridiculous. Why in the world would we ever think that we could eat the same diet that we feed cattle to fatten them up in this country and, and be okay. I mean, and the thing is, is that our cattle, you know, and I, obviously this is confined animal feeding operations, not and factory farming, not, you know, grass fed and, uh, pasture raised type of animals, but, um, which is, you know, what we obviously, um, subscribe to, but, um, the thing is, is that if in that respect, but the majority of this country eats food that comes from CAFOs and the simple fact of the matter is they're all sick and it's because they shouldn't be eating that either. (laughs) But, um, anyway, uh, it's just kind of an interesting thing to me that, yeah, we don't, we don't realize that. Yeah, no, it, 
And it's also a good analogy too for people to realize, yeah, that's that. But that's the way we've been taught, you know, from commercials to companies to government telling us this is what we're supposed to do. I mean, even doctors were telling us back then this is the way it, it you know, this is what's healthy. And so you're relying on these people that you look up to and like, okay, this, this is what they say. But now I think there's an awakening and, um, you know, people are becoming more aware of the newer science and people are starting to take control of their health. And you guys are doing a great job of that, especially with something like Paleo FX, which is huge. Um, how, long, how many years have you guys been doing Paleo FX now? Since 2012. So um, this will be our seventh, wait. Fifth. Right? No, sixth. sixth. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um it's gonna be our sixth show. So um yeah, it's um it's interesting how fast it's grown and how big it's gotten. Yeah, yes. did you guys expect this type of response to the I mean, did you expect it to grow this much? Um, we expected it to grow. We had okay, so our first initial intent when we came home from um the ancestral health symposium when we first had the idea for paleo effects was to do a little conference at our gym and do like you know do movement sessions do some talks and panels and to do some cooking demonstrations at our gym <laughs> <laughs> we figured at that point once we saw how things went we would you know we were thinking about maybe if not doing it at the gym then doing it at this small venue here in austin and so um, and then we figured we would just grow it over the years. And um, what happened is we had someone that got involved at the beginning that was like, you know, we you really should do this as you know big. You shouldn't you shouldn't um, go small. You should go big. And um, convinced us to do that. And uh, we did. And it's been interesting. Yeah, we've been pretty humbled by the fact that so many people have planted their you know Paleo FX flag and and gotten on board and got involved and been just huge supporters of us from the beginning. So, um, and yeah, it's doubled in size every year and then it tripled in size in 2015. So we were pretty excited about that. Wow. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> I mean, most people would, that is, that is amazing. Um, those numbers are just are just shocking. I didn't know that, to be honest with you, but um, I definitely hear all about it. And this will actually be the first year that I am coming out there, which I'm excited about um, because I feel like, you know, maybe at first it was just the purists, you know, you know, all, all those hardcore. I don't know what you call them, paleo uh, <laughs> fans or, you know, paleo purists, if you will. But now it's branching out to more of the mainstream and, you know, it's getting out there to your everyday average person. To where everybody, almost everybody knows what they've heard of pay, the paleo diet, right? And so I, I feel like it's growing in popular, popularity, especially with, you know, the weight loss industry, the fitness industry, which is kind of what I'm a part of too in my audience as well. But, you know, I, I, I'm definitely trying to pass on the education that I've learned from from you guys and, and like people like Rob and, and Abel James and Melissa uh, to pass it on down because that's really what needs to happen. And now there's so many avenues like podcasts and uh, YouTube and social media instead of just commercials on TV. Crazy. Um, yeah, we, uh, what I find interesting is the, in 2012, there was only one paleo New York times bestselling author and that was Rob. And uh -huh. now we are in, uh, we've lost count. There's we're somewhere in the thirties the or forties of New York times bestselling authors that identify as paleo, which is really incredible. The one thing, though, that I want to make sure that you're, particularly your listeners, if they're not very familiar with Paleo FX, is our conference is not just about the diet and not just about nutrition. Our uh, conference is about an, a holistic lifestyle. And so you're going to come to Paleo FX and find that there's, you know, obviously there's some things on diet and nutrition, but there's a lot of stuff on sustainability, on um, mindset, on spirituality on lifestyle, um, happiness, um, movement sessions, obviously just it's all across the board because paleo is not just about the diet. It's about an entire lifestyle. And that is in my opinion, removing toxins from your life in all aspects, which is, you know, not just your food, but also in your home, in your life. And, um, you know, which includes toxic people. So we are, that's really what the whole thing is about. And, you know, we need to move, remove as many toxins from our food supply as we possibly can. So it's, 
wanted them to know it's really a very holistic approach to a, to a, um, a very cool lifestyle in my opinion, because it's a very sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. And one of the things I've learned about transformation is how much of transformation is mental and emotional versus just physical, right? You could give somebody a diet and maybe they'll do it for a little while, but if you can get them to transform their, uh, their emotional well being, for example, that right there is going to be more lasting than, in my opinion, than just, than just changing up their diet. But the two are so connected, right? That your diet, what you put inside of you and the, the mind body connection as well. And there's a, a connection to food too. And before all this, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize the powerful emotional connection that we have to food. Uh, but it's meant to be that way, right? And food isn't just meant to be put in our bodies and digested and, and crapped out. There's so much more to it than that. There's it's, it's information, right? Um, so I think that's awesome. You guys are doing that. And, um, I, I'm interested to know your take on, okay, you know, it's become popular and the way I see it, you know, I see so many diets that be once to become popular, then you kind of have to kind of weed out, um, certain parts of it where once it becomes mainstream, then everybody's trying to put that label on almost anything and market it. Right. And then it becomes more about the bottom line. What kind of concerns do you have, or, or do you see this in the, in the paleo industry with now that it's so big, how do you guys kind of manage that a little bit? Well, one thing that we do is, um, all of the vendors that come to paleo effects have to meet pretty stringent, um, requirements for us. We have them um, all sign contracts that state that they understand what our, we have an entire band ingredients list. They kind of all have to jump through all those hoops before they can come to PaleoFX because we want to make sure that whoever's at PaleoFX is providing the right types of um, products to our um to all of our audience and so that they feel comfortable that everything has been vetted. Now, this is the thing though, obviously, like you're saying with paleo, there's going to be, you know, there's not one paleo diet. I mean, like I have a completely different paleo diet than Keith does to some extent. Um, because there are items that I can eat that he cannot. And there's items he can eat that I cannot. So, you know, the only thing that, if something falls into like the paleo sphere, you know, some people can eat potatoes and rice and some people cannot. So we do allow some of those things. So people just have to, you know, make sure that they're doing looking at, at ingredients and making sure that there's not something in there that they don't tolerate well. But um, for the most part, everything at uh, paleo effects is paleo and primal. And we, um, we have a lot of, um, we also have a lot of sustainability partners that come in that are vendors and we have a lot of biohacking. So, um, these are just the, you know, some of the things that we do, but I, I do, um, I think that as paleo grows, yes, we're going to have people start trying to claim that they are paleo friendly. I've already seen it. I've seen things say they were paleo friendly. Fortunately, that's trademarked. And, um, and, you know, a lot of times we get that taken care of pretty quickly um, but the thing is, is that, um, you know, the, it's just really doing your homework and really knowing what works for you and what doesn't. And that's, that's all N equals one. Each person really is responsible. Um, it's not just your right, but it's your responsibility to, um, you know, be your own health advocate. Um, no one else can do that for you like you can. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that, Doctors may understand how you're feeling, but you're the only one that knows how you feel. So um, if you are in, you know, eating something that doesn't agree with you, you're going to be the first one that knows that. Now, I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to know whether or not you know, you're know you okay with potatoes or rice or with you know whatever the case may be. So you know, you're going to have to be responsible for making sure you know what those things are. I have you know, I've got kind of a laundry list of things I can't eat. So I just have to be careful and I just have to be really mindful because the simple fact of the matter is, is that our, um, our entire food, um, supply is, um, you know, proliferated with stuff that's not good. And, you know, just about everything you see on, in the market just is got soy in it and has, you know, all kinds of 
junk in it. So you just have to be real careful. And really, if you're sticking to mostly whole foods, you don't have a whole lot to worry about. You know, you're, those are pretty clear ingredients. If you pick up an apple, you're likely getting an apple. And when you're, you know, pick up a steak, that's what you're getting is a steak. Or when you pick up a thing of cauliflower, that's what you're getting. So you don't have to look at labels with that. But, you know, there are some things little, you know, um, you know, salad dressings or things like that. You just have to be real careful. Yeah. And I think, I think there's a place for convenience foods, uh, you know, especially with our society and the way we live, you know, if you have kids and you're taking them all over the place and you're, you or you have to travel for your work, it's, yeah, it's hard to pack a steak and, and vegetables in your bag and bring it with you. So I do feel like there's a place for, for those kinds of things. But at the same time, um, I do feel like with any diet, you know, it's going to become mainstream like that. And there's going to be options of like, you know, paleo donuts and paleo cookies. And yeah, you're eating paleo, but you're still like, there's, there's still that whole food, um, uh, notion that you need to be aware of like, okay, is this a whole food? And is, is the majority of my food that I'm eating, is it, is it whole food or is it from these other processed, uh, you know, even though they fit under the category of paleo, I re I did a, a gluten-free experiment just a little, a uh, couple years or three years ago, uh, as you can tell, I like to do experiments, but <laughs> it's interesting. I feel like everybody should experiment with their body to find out what's optimal, but just kind of to show people that just because something has a label doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. And I, I did it with the gluten-free uh, craze that's going on. You know, you go to any store and you'll see this gluten-free section of gluten-free pizza and bread and cookies and crackers. And yes, it's gluten-free, but I feel like, you know, people associate that with like, okay, if I eat this, this is going to make me lose weight. But in reality, it's not, it's not healthy food. It's just as unhealthy, if not more unhealthy than the non gluten-free foods. And so I ended up gaining, I think I gained 20 pounds in two months eating <laughs> gluten-free foods. And then the second half was to educate people on, okay, if you are going to be gluten-free, stick with the whole foods. Here's how you eat. Here's what a typical day should look like. If you have to stay away from gluten, for example. And now I'm not saying you can't have a treat every once in a while. I, I'm okay with that, but uh, be smart about it, right? Uh, so, <laughs> well, but- my, my whole thing is, is if you're gonna have a treat, then make sure that it's something that you really, really like and you enjoy and enjoy every bite of it and not, and don't beat yourself up about it either. Um, Cause there are people that do that, that go through that whole thing. And I think that's almost worse, more damaging is beating yourself up over having something that you enjoy. And so, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I don't think, um, you know, the paleo treats and things that are out there, obviously they are not meant for every day, but neither was, this is the other thing, neither was cakes and cookies and all of, and cupcakes and brownies and all of that. None of that was ever meant for every day. Those were all usually meant for celebrations or some type of special occasion and we've turned it into, oh, I'm going to have this every single day. And so that is where the change needs to come is that mindset of what it is, what is really truly acceptable food on a daily basis. And the thing is, is that if you're, if you have the sweet tooth, which lots of people do, and I can tell you I'm guilty of that as well, is, um, you know, is going to fruit instead of having opting for a dessert or a treat and only keep the treats and desserts and things like that for special occasions. I mean, I just, that just helps so much more, especially if you're wanting to maintain weight loss or to um, not have, you know, weight gain. Yeah, it's interesting, our mentality when it comes to dessert or comfort foods, you know, that's where people tend to eat their emotions, right? Uh, you know, I had a stressful day, therefore wine and brownies it is tonight, or Hey, I had a great day. Let's celebrate <laughs> wine and brownies. <laughs> you know, so it's finding that balance and, and shifting your mentality. And, and unfortunately, it's really hard for people. And this took me doing my fit to fat to fit journey to realize how powerful that emotional connection to certain foods are, especially if we grew up that way. Like if our parents taught us, hey, you know, it's your birthday or hey, it's a Friday, it's, it's pizza night or, um, you know, whatever it is, we kind of grew up with like those sentimental feelings towards certain foods and we think okay well this is th then we become emotionally connected to food in that sense and not saying that that can't be healthy but for the most part it's it's overdone especially here in america um shifting gears back to paleo effects i feel like we're going from the diet to paleo effects a little bit i kind of want to talk about paleo effects because i think it's a great event that people should look forward to and and attending what do you guys have coming up this year it's in uh june right 
No, we, uh, it's May 19th. May 19th. The- I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. It's May 19th through the 21st. It's in Austin, Texas. We take over the entire Palmer event center and we have quite a bit of changes from if there's people that have been to the event from years past, quite a few changes. We have changed up the floor a little bit and, um, we're going to, uh, be bringing in some new elements to the event that we're pretty excited about. Those are, we're finalizing the details on a lot of that stuff so that that will be coming out and you can check that out on our website and on our social media, paleofx.com and Facebook, paleofx and Twitter, paleofx and Instagram, paleofx. And so, um, you can check all of those out there and get all of the latest updates on, on everything that's coming. Uh, once we finalize a lot of things. So, you know, we have some new, people coming like you yourself through. And then, um, we have, uh, Dr. Josh ax, which we're really super excited about. We have art Devaney coming, um, who arts not spoken uh, publicly for a while. So we're really excited about that since he really just released his book. And then, um, Jordan Rubin, um, and we we're working on a couple of other big names that um, once we get them confirmed, trust me, they will be out. But we have, you know, a lot of the um, Rob Wolf will be there, Mark Sisson, um, Nora Gigaudis, uh, Chris Kresser, um, just going through. The, I, I will miss people. Sarah Ballantyne, that kind of, you know, there's a whole lot of people I've missed because we have over 100 speakers that come to this event. And it's three days of um, hands-on. There's talks and very interactive with the audience. Uh, panels, very interactive with the audience. Workshops, um, both classroom and movement workshops and cooking demonstrations. Again, very hands-on and um, lot, very interactive with the audience. And so um, it's just a really fun event. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of really cool things coming. So yeah, it's going to be really exciting. And uh, I, I like the, uh, Dr. Josh X. I met him on the Dr. Oz show and I've been following him since then. So that's cool that he's going to be there as well. Um, I, now, I, I can't remember what year it was that you guys had some kind of um, fitness event of some type, kind of like a CrossFit slash athletic event. Are you guys doing something like that as well this yeah, year? We actually do it every year. It's the Paleo FX Fit Score. Yes, and that's what it is. Kind of our answer to, to the combine, to the football combine. So It's for the, um, you know, athlete, everyday person can find out where they stand. And it's kind of um, on, you know, on a fitness scoring level that isn't, uh, and we have a competition every year. And uh, we, it kind of of levels the playing field a little bit um, so that um, someone like yourself or my husband can compete with, you know, someone that, you know, sits on the couch three or four days a week and they can just kind of see where they are at, but it, it kind of helps level the playing field because it puts them into a category for, um, you know, everyday people, but it's a, it's a great, uh, uh, it's just a really great, um, competition and there are some really cool new changes coming to that this year as well. So we're kind of excited about that. That is cool. I'm excited to see that uh, in person this year. So uh, definitely people listening, uh, you have a lot to look forward to in Austin. And I've heard so many cool things just about the city of Austin, right? Like I haven't been there yet, but uh, a lot of cool companies are in Austin. And I just, how long have you guys been out in Austin now? We've been here the whole time. We've okay. Had, um, we've had the event here in Austin every year. And yeah, a lot of great companies are here. Um we have um, on it is one of the one of our is always one of our partners at Palo FX and they're they are located here in Austin. Enviromedica, who is a big sponsor of ours, is also in Austin, and um, th- it is an incredible city, and um, it's a fun city. Uh, obviously, live music capital of the world, and uh, but it's just a it's a cool experience to come to Austin. It's a really, um, cool vibe, lots of entrepreneurs in Austin. And it's, um, since 1991, I believe it is Austin. And this may have changed, but I haven't seen anything about it changing. But since 1991, I was the highest educated town in the country per capita. 
So it's a really cool city and uh, awesome. just a really, just really great um, welcoming people here um, and a lot of fun things to do. Um, and then we're located at Palmer Event Center, which is right on Lady, um, Lady Bird Lake, Lady Bird Johnson Lake. They just changed the name of the lake. I apologize for getting that wrong, but um, it's always been Lake Austin, but um, they just changed it to Lady Bird Lake. And so we're right there on the edge of the uh, downtown. So we've got a gorgeous view of the skyline of Austin. Um, the, um, uh, the Capitol is not too far from where we are. So you can see that it's gorgeous. And then the UT towers. And so, and that's a beautiful campus. Um, so just a lot of stuff to do here as well, but, um, it's, uh, going to be a really cool, fun time. Yeah, I know. I think it will. And I, uh, I know on out there and, uh, Aubrey Marcus is a good friend. He's cool. I, um, I didn't know they were partners with you guys, but that makes it even more compelling to come. <laughs> Yeah. And we just have some really great, um, people that are involved. Yeah. Our, Aubrey will be coming back and, um, oh, uh, just, it's, it's just so, I can't even tell you what, uh, this is definitely something I would want to go to if I didn't even, even if I didn't own it. Um, because, um, particularly our panels are really super compelling. And like I said, highly interactive with the audience, the audience gets to ask questions, at all talks and all panels, um, unless the, the, unless the speaker chooses to take their, that time to continue on with whatever they're, they're talking about. Um, and that does happen occasionally, but very rare. Most, most speakers welcome questions. So, um, it's, it's just a really cool, um, experience. I, I can't even tell it's a, I just always call it a three day paleo party. I mean, <laughs> this is one of those things too, is if you feel like you're weird and you go to dinner and you have to ask for all these substitutions in your food and all of this stuff, um, be, or you ask where all of your food came from or the origins or what have you, or what kind of oil they're serving or whatever, or you carry around your own butter or salt. Um, this is the, where you're going to find your tribe. These these people are going to make you feel normal. So <laughs> you're not going to feel like you're alone. Um, so it's a great group of people and it's just a lot of fun. And there's just tons of networking opportunities at Palo FX as well. And, um, it's a big, huge party. We have, uh, we've got a lot of social events as well, uh, tied to Palo FX. Yeah. And where do you guys see it going in the next few years? Um, you know, other cities, international, uh, what do you guys foresee happening? The plan is international. Um, we had thought we would have been out of the country by now, but what we realized was we weren't ready. And so we decided to do everything to get ready. And we're working on that right now. And that's building the infrastructure of Paleo FX so that when we go out of the country, the last thing on earth that we would want to do is go out of the country and be a complete flop. And so the big thing is, was building the infrastructure so that when we did go out of the country that we could have a team that would be overseas that could um, put together the event and know what they are doing and us be able to come in in the last 10 weeks and, and be able to finish it up and walk in and, and run the show. So um, that's the plan. We more than likely will go to Australia first. Um, we'll either, it'll be Australia or London, but um we did go do some scouting to go overseas a couple of years ago and realized we were definitely not ready. So, um, that's, that's the plan. And then more than likely what you'll see is some very small events happening, um, within the next year around the country. Um, not that we will always keep the big daddy in Austin. Um, but we'll probably do like some one or two day events around the country, um, within the next year or so. Yeah. Well, if you guys ever make it out to Utah, let uh, me and uh, Melissa Hartwig know. We'll take care of you guys. <laughs> there's a couple of us here in Utah. Just kidding. Yeah. There's there's a, quite a few, actually. Um, there's but, a lot of them. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Have you ever been out to Utah? Um, I've flown through Utah. Yeah, that's most so, people's answer. <laughs> when, I've been, when I've come through Utah, I've actually texted um, Dallas and Melissa and said, Hey, I'm in your town, um, but I'm only here for, you know, <laughs> an hour and at the airport. <laughs> but, um, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, I've, I've, 
been up in Oregon, spent time up in Oregon, but I have not spent time in Utah. Yeah. Well, that is what I want to do. <laughs> well, I, I know you guys are super busy. I've heard you guys say, you know, pretty, you pretty much don't sleep at all. You like, you rest up all year round just to, <laughs> just to make it through these three days. So, um, yeah, I won't take up too much more of your time, Michelle. Um, but we'll put all the links to the um, social media and the website that you mentioned. Is there anything else you wanted to point people in the direction of websites or um, any anything else like that that we can well, put in the show notes? I, I can tell you one of our we one of the things that we launched last year, and we actually started playing around with it a couple of years ago with some entrepreneur stuff um, because we realized how many entrepreneurs are in this space, and so. We have a new event. Um, we did an, an inaugural event last year um, for, um, it was Health Entrepreneurs FX, but we have partnered with um, Alex Sharpen. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's an incredible guy. And we partnered with him and we have launched a new um, event called EEFX, which is Evolved Entrepreneur FX. And you can go to eefx.com if you're interested in that. But it's um, really helping um, entrepreneurs take their business to the very next level. And the thing is, is that my husband and I have done lots of masterminds, lots of business events, lots of um, entrepreneur events and everything. And nothing has ever given us the tools and the actual um, what are the things that we need to actually do every day Um to actually grow our business, scale up and, and make changes in our business that will, you know, be conceivable and you, you will be able to see the results until this, um, event. And so, um, we went and, um, took a look at all of the content and went through it ourselves. Our team went through it and it's changed our business drastically. And so uh -huh. I can just say from a personal point of view, it's been amazing, amazing change in our, in our business. And so that's why we chose to partner with them because one of the things is you can go to, you can go to all kinds of masterminds and entrepreneur events and get that rah, rah and motivation. And Tony Robbins is out there and, you know, John Maxwell and all kinds of um, motivational speakers. The thing is, is that most entrepreneurs, particularly in our space who um, want to be conscious capitalists and want to do business with a purpose, they don't need more motivation. Um, they, what they need is actual, you know, skill sets and things that they, they can do every day to actually grow their business more. So, um, it is, uh, it's been a game changer for payload effects. And, um, so if you're, if you're, uh, if your audience is interested in something like that, eefx.com and, um, you'll come out to Austin and spend a couple of days with us and we're going to change your life. Um, our first one is March 24th through 20, March 24th and 25th. And we're planning, um, right now we're trying to, um, get the dates figured out so that we could have one right there at the same time as Palo FX. So <clears> that if people are coming for Palo FX, they can come for this as well. And so, um, and anybody that buys the tickets for EEFX, we have a special deal for them for Palo FX. So, um, I'm hoping um, that we're going to be able to get those dates worked out. We're trying to m make sure we've got, we're not crazy. We, we, well, we are crazy, but that's beside the point. What um, we are going to be moving our offices to. So <laughs> that's why we're trying to work out all those things. So if you go to the website, it'll tell you once we decide on those dates and everything, when that will be as well. But March 24th and 25th are definitely set for right now. Okay. Well, I, I know I, I'm interested at least, and I'm sure there's others that are listening that are interested in that. So I'll, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Um, but I will, uh, um, well, first of all, thank you, Michelle, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And this is great. And I'm super excited for coming out there to Austin. I know some people are going to be out there as well. Um, and once again, thank you for all you do. I know you're super busy. So thanks for taking the time to come on, on my show. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And we are looking forward to having you at Pillow Effects. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michelle. And we will be seeing you soon. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for listening to another great episode here on the Fit to Fat Fit Experience podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode with, with Michelle Norris, the CEO of Paleo FX. And if you're in Austin and you're planning on going to Paleo FX, please come say hi. Um, I love speaking and meeting 
to all kinds of people, especially my fans that have been followers for years now. Um, I, I'm super excited to see you guys there in Austin. And plus, Austin's such a great city from everything I've heard. Uh, don't forget to check out my program, transform.fit2fat2fit.com, which is my the relaunch of my fat to fit program. Uh, you know, back when I did it years ago, it was, I'll be honest, it was kind of sloppy. I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, a lot of broken links were in there. And finally, finally made the time to clean it up, fix it up for you guys so that it's actually a quality product and so much more convenient to use. So, um, Definitely check that out. Also, please show some love to our sponsors, Quest Keto and DropAnFbomb.com. Remember to use that code fit to fit at DropAnFbomb.com for a 10% discount. Unfortunately, Quest Keto does not offer discounts right now. Maybe in the future they will. Um, but Keto on, my friends. If you're doing Keto, if you're doing whatever lifestyle, then we can still be friends. It's all, it's all good. Um, I got nothing but love and respect for everybody on their journey to a better version of themselves. So thank you guys so much for the love. We'll see you guys back here next week for another great episode. (laughs) 